Okay, thank you all again. And again, I would like to share just a little um, message uh, we received uh, the other week. Thank you, Dr. Gregor, for sharing it with me. And I thought it would be really good tonight to share it on our conference call tonight. And I think it's worth sharing. And um, it says this here. It says it's, it's, it is a mistake to think time is going. And what this is all about, it's about time. And I know um, in the last year, God has been really dealing with me about time. He, keep, he was saying to me not long ago, he said, although the clock is on the wall and it looked like it's the same clock, but he did tell me the time is not the same time that I have been used to probably 10, 20 years ago. It seems like now things are, it's kind of like it's accelerating. And I don't know whether anybody else, you know, have uh, been able to experience the time. It's like I remember we could just get up, sit outside under the shade tree, talk in fellowship, get up and come in the house clean our house, cook our dinner, still had a lo- enough time to sit around and fellowship and just enjoy each other's company. But it seemed like now everybody, it's like we always in a hurry, and it's like we got to hurry up and get somewhere because the time is just like it's just, it's just accelerating. But when I heard this, when I began to read this, God also, now he's helping me to kind of understand more what he was trying to reveal to me. And it says, um, it it is a mistake to think time is going. Time is not going. Time is here until the world ends. It is you and I, that is going. You don't waste time. Time is infinite. You waste yourself. And how many times have we said it and we've heard people say, oh, it was just a waste of my time. It was a waste of my time. And that's how we have seen it in in the past. It was like we were wasting the time. Now, as we began to see it from a different perspective, we realized that we didn't waste the time. The time was still here. We just wasted our own self. And I believe this is why God is teaching us how to be able to, to uh, not to allow ourselves to become a part of things and become a part of people that is not good for our lives. Because what happens, sometimes we can be in relationship. And if that relationship is always taken away from you, you say, well, I'm wasting my time in it. No, you're wasting yourself. And I think we all can attest that we've been a part of that type of, 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 of action in our lives some part of our lives, whether it was sometime we wasted a lot of, we thought we was wasting a lot of time with whether it was in our families, because sometimes people are just not ready to move forward. And it's okay. I remember when God was transitioning me and changing my thoughts and teaching me how to take better care of myself and of course, teaching me ways of doing things that cause me less stress. And when I was doing that and I was trying to help everybody else to come along and trying to pull them and trying to explain it, and I was spending, you know, here I am again, I'm spending a lot of time trying to get them to see it. And I heard the Lord say to me, Deborah, just keep moving. Pray for them. They'll catch up after a while. And what he and when I look back at all of that, I'm seeing that God was teaching me how not to waste myself. If that makes sense. 
So what God is teaching us how to better take care of what he has given to us, and that is ourselves and our lives. In other words, we must become accountable, and we must take charge of our lives and stop allowing ourselves to be put in situations that are not good for us. And getting back to relationships, I remember I would I was saying one time, oh that person, oh they were I just they were so bad and they were this and they were that and the Lord said no, it's not like that Deborah, they are good person they are they are a good person but they're not good for you. And so when I start seeing it from that perspective, I didn't judge that individual and I didn't uh, resent that person. I just realized that person just was not good for me. And I believe as we embrace kingdom and kingdom ways of doing things, God has just given us the ability how to see things from a whole different perspective. Mm -hmm. Because if the kingdom is within me, that means I got to do something to protect it, and i got to do something. It's all about what's in me. And that's why I realize that God has taught, as he began to teach us and even teaching us even more, even now as we're talking about time, how we think, well, time is moving on. No, time is going to be here. I got, I'm the one moving on, so if I'm moving on to to move out of this world, in other words, uh, my life is no longer, I'm not getting younger, I'm getting, my time is coming to the end, so I got to make the best of it. And I want to encourage everybody, never let anyone make you feel bad about bettering yourself. And with that being said, learn how to be where you're celebrated and not tolerate it. And it's okay when people don't want to be with you. Don't be mad. Because guess what? Somebody will enjoy you. So stop fighting to be where you're not wanted. And go in a place where you're, you're loved and you're appreciated. And guess what? Now you don't have to fight. So God is teaching us some things we're just bringing it upon our own self. But we're talking again about time. We don't waste time, but we waste ourselves. You are finite. You and I are finite, but time is infinite. It is you and I uh, uh, that grows old and die. Hmm. Not time. Time does not grow or it does not die. So time will always be here. Yeah. But we will, but we will not always be here. So in essence, from now, sure, I mean, we are getting to know this at this time in our life, but it's not late. To now try to maximize the time that you have on this earth here, to make the best use of it. Start and start putting things off. Stop putting your happiness off and say, and do not allow anybody to frustrate you, to make you angry and because you are wasting energy dealing with that, with, with that person there. You, you, right now, you cannot afford to waste energy on anybody. That is, that is, I mean, you know, it's time to move on because you don't have a lot of time on this earth here. The days, our days are numbered, but time days is not numbered. And with that being said, Dr. Granger, even as I'm reading this quote here, the Bible, this is biblical. And you can find this scripture here in the book of Psalms, the 90th chapter in the 12th verse. It says, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So when you start really taking care of yourself, making sure you're in the right place, 
taking uh, control of your own happiness and realizing that happiness, your happiness, you're in charge of it. Nobody else, you're in charge of it. And realizing that Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. So you got, we got everything we need, but we got to get to the point that we must apply wisdom. And go ahead. You see, in this life here, there are three kinds of people. People that make things happen, people that watch things happen, and some folks sit around and say, what's happening? Not trying to make it happen, and waiting, waiting for something to happen before they can do A, B, C, and D. You, you don't have that luxury. You, you, you no longer have that luxury to keep waiting. Because the, the, the more you wait, the closer your time on earth becomes closer. And, and even now, I understand what God told me about three years ago. I was just thinking about my birthday. It was coming up to July, and I'm just, oh, I'm just so excited about my birthday, and I'm kind of thinking what I want to do and what I can do. And the Lord just specifically said that this word, and y'all heard me say it before. He says, Deborah, you are closer to your death date than you are from your birth date. And I literally began to tremble because I'm thinking, well, God, you getting ready to kill me? I mean, you getting ready to take my life off the earth? No, but he was giving me a word of wisdom. If, if, if I only have five more years, which means if I'm closer to the end of my life than I am from the beginning of my life, wisdom tell me you better take it seriously. Because now that I understand I'm closer on this side to my death date than I am from my birthday, which means, guess what, I only have what I have left. I'm going to make it good. In other words, he was really trying to teach me you got to be become responsible for the rest of your life. If you really want to live in peace, joy, happiness, you want harmony, you got to learn how to do it. And I'm telling you, as I begin to listen to the Lord, apply wisdom, because the wisdom is about you allow, we allowing God to tell us how to do it. That's what the writer in the scripture said. He said, Lord, you teach us. You teach us. I don't need man to teach me. That was good early part of my life. But now in my latter part, I need the Lord to teach me. And now I understand the scripture when he said, your latter going to be greater than your formal. Well, but then it also is up to you to, to, because in order for that to happen, you have a role to play. Yes. You know, you just can't sit and say, oh, I, I mean, I'm waiting for it to happen. The more you wait, it, it might not happen. You must be, you are responsible for your, your own being, your happiness. Whatever Life is what you make it. So if you want to live this abundant life, you, you have a role to play. It is God's desire that you live the abundant life while you are still living here on this earth. But whether you live it or not, that's up to you. That's your decision. And also, God has given us everything that we need to make it happen. But we got to stop thinking uh, the way we've been thinking, because we think, well, if I had a, uh, if I had a girlfriend. If I had a boyfriend, the only reason I'm not happy because what my daddy, my daddy wasn't in my life. Well, I'm not happy because I did this. Somebody did that. Somebody did that. No, you have to let go. We just talked about that earlier. Letting go. That, there's times you just got to let things go. If you really want to walk, to really take care of your life and to feel yourself and fulfill your peace and your joy and your happiness, you got to let go. When I say let go, and it, and it says in that passage, letting go don't mean I don't care. 
It doesn't mean that I don't care. But let me let me just say this: If you and I had a, had a disagreement yesterday, instead of or oh, forgetting, letting go, I bring it into today, and you going your way, and I'm yet into today. I brought from yesterday into today, and guess what? You have gone your way. You have a doing what you want to do, and I'm sitting down here, self pity, wondering why you said this to me, why you did this to me, why you've gone your way. How am I benefiting? I'm hurting my now of what happened in the past, but in the meantime, time is not waiting for me. So I'm it, that's my time that I'm wasting, focusing on something that has already happened. That you cannot do anything else about it. And I think what God is trying to get us to shift our mind thinking and, 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 and make it okay that it's all right. You have to come to agreement with yourself. It's all right if people don't like me. Because that's, I think that, that's a real uh, strong, I mean, that's a strong hold on us because we mm-hmm. want to be liked. And we are lovable people, and we want everybody to love us, and we try to treat everybody right. But in the midst of all of that treating everybody right, guess what? People still mistreat us. And then what happens? We become hurt, wounded, sad, mad, depressed, and all of that. But when you come to an agreement with yourself, settle it in yourself, in your heart, in your mind, people, it's okay for people not to like me. Why is that okay? Because... They, it's called the, what do you call it, Dr. Gregory? The First Amendment, right? Yes. The because, right. Because the, uh, according to the First Amendment, everyone has the right to choose, the freedom of choice. So who am exactly. I to, to interfere with your choice, whether you like me or dislike me? It, it's exactly. not my business. That's your right. So I don't have the right to interfere with your choice. That's your right. I also have a right to accept it. But not to accept it. That's my right to to go my way and leave you alone. That's my right. You see, Christ came on earth. Not everyone liked him. People people crucified him because they didn't like him. So guess but it what? did not. But it did not take away who he was. He was still exactly. the Christ. And that's exactly. what we have to make up in our mind to realize mm-hmm. I know who I am. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take away from who I am. I know who I am. I'm a good person. I'm a lovable person. Only thing I can say about that individual that don't like me, they just missed out on one of the best friends they could ever have. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see? So... Again, the time, the time, the right at time is so critical. It you know, is I mean, very time, critical. Time, time, the right. Now, these are critical times that we are living in, and there is no need to exert energy on something that is that would not benefit you. Exactly. That would hurt you. So, so, Doctor Greg, you said don't bring it into the next day and don't waste time, energy on something that's not good. What it, but if you're doing it, how do you stop? It's a mindset. You got to change it with your thinking. You got to change it with how you perceive things. Do not be put it like this. I would not your I would not allow your opinion of me determine how I feel. Because guess what? You have opinion. I have opinion. It's, it's only your opinion, and I will never allow your opinion to dictate to me. How I live my life who, to tell me who I am. No, I'm not busy. I'm not judging myself on based on what your opinion of me. No, I can't do that. And I'm gonna also uh, 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 respond to the question because you know we can say this to you, but we you have to deal with it. And and I can talk about it because I had to walk through that. And I can I'm gonna tell you my process of walking through the hurt, the pain, the rejection. First of all, I had to realize everything in, there was something in me that always made me feel that way. Let me get back to uh, what I uh, I was about to say. Um, I didn't have my dad in my life. So 
as time went on by, I was going through a, actually I was going through a divorce, and I, I mean, I was really feeling really bad. It was very hurtful. I, I mean, I just couldn't understand. And of course, I'm I'm dealing with it. I'm being real. I'm dealing with it. I'm not. I can't tell you. Well, I just didn't think about it. I thought about it. <laughs> I thought about it, and I. It was like a constantly, constantly reminder of what have I done? Why is me? Why is this? And why is that? And one day, like I said, I was just riding, and the Lord asked me this question. He says, Deborah, did that person leave your life better than they came in? Hmm, never thought about the look at, never thought about that. And then I start analyzing it. My goodness, of course, now they left in good shape. As a matter of fact, they left in a better shape than I did. (laughs) So now the Lord says to me, well, you have done a good job. He said, anytime anybody leave your life better than they came, and that doesn't mean that you don't have to, I mean, better than they can, they could have, They've learned something from you. That's what it. That's what I'm saying. They have learned something from you, or they have gained something from you through that relationship or whatever. If they leave your life better than they came, you ain't got nothing to do but just rejoice and be glad. And I'm telling you, just that, just those words alone, it it liberated me. Because when people hurt you, you do have the tendency to beat yourself up. Like, well, why me? Why are you doing it to me? Why am I doing Why are they doing that to me? And then the Lord would say these things to me when I would, as I, he's, he's training me how to bear the hurt uh, and, the, and, and the abusiveness of other people, how they treat, treat it, treating me. And he says to me, he says, mm, and he would tell me, don't you cry. Because I would just cry <laughs> when people would hurt me. I would just just cry. I'm just I was so my grandmother used to say you're too tender hearted. Anyway, I would just cry. And after a while, I would walk through something, and God said, "You better not cry." And He was like strengthening my heart that it was okay for them to say. He said, "It's okay for them to say that about you. It doesn't mean that that's who you are. Those are their words." And then he went on to tell me again. He said, yes, guess what, Deborah? Hurt people hurt people. And that helped me because I realized if a person is that hard and want to hurt me, that's because they're hurt because I don't go around hurting people. I don't want to go. I don't want to hurt anyone. But he said, why, hurt, why people hurt you is because they're hurting. It really has nothing to do with you. And this was my experience. Uh, when I was going through my divorce, I, I decided to occupy myself so that I could not think on the, going through the divorce. And that's when I enrolled in the doctoral program. I figured that if I occupied myself, I wouldn't have time to have a self pity party. Lord, why me? What did I do wrong? No, I would be so consumed in my studies that I, my focus would not be, I would not even think on going through a divorce. And that's what I did. So I, I, I shifted my thinking from the, to the from the divorce to my studies, and that helped me. Yeah. So you know, we can give you a lot of different scenarios, and as you progress, God is going to help you because there is no one size fit all. But then, even what we have said, it could be something that can help you. Um, as Dr. Gregor can say, even during those times. Start consuming yourself into an area that makes that 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 can enhance your life, and you exactly. you're so busy with it and so consumed, you don't even know that people are messing with you. Okay, Betty, did that? Um, any That's other questions? Very good. Yes, yes, that that was perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're going to continue with uh, time. Again, it is you that grows old and die. Time doesn't. So make better use 
of yourself before you expire. Now, you notice what it says, make better use of yourself, not better use of time. See, we've been thinking we need to make better use of time. And we've been thinking time's slipping away. <laughs> time ain't slipping away. I'm slipping away. You see how this, even this here, it can shift your thinking? Because we've always talked that it said that it was time the one was moving so fast. It was time that was passing by. Time is not really passing. I'm the one passing through time. I'm the one passing through time. Without wasting time, you're wasting energy. And you're wasting, oh, you're not, exactly. I, you're not wasting time. You're wasting energy. And we also want to understand wasting time, I mean, doing doing nothing does not mean that you're wasting time. Oh. It doesn't mean that you got to be so busy all of the time. But you have to learn that doing nothing is a very valuable part of time. Yes. And I'm going to share one other uh, story, uh, incident that God helped me with. I was, uh, and it had to do with my challenge doing a di- my divorce. And I was, I was speaking, I was, oh, and I was sharing with the people about, you know, because I believe that if we talk about our own uh, challenges, it can help people to understand, you know what, we've all been there. So I was talking about this bad time that I went through in my life. And then all of a sudden God prompted me. He says, Deborah, again, now this has been 15 years ago. He says, Deborah, no time is a bad time. What it is, you're just feeling bad at that time. I mean, it blew me away. I was like, oh, my God. He said, if you are living, if you're still in time, no Mm -hmm. time is a bad time. Now, you might be feeling bad during that time, but there's no time is a bad time. And I see it now. Time is a wonderful thing. But if I start seeing time as a bad time, you know, during that time, I don't want to do nothing. I want to sleep. I want to not go nowhere. I don't want to comb my hair. I don't want to brush my teeth. I don't want to get out of the bed. But when I understand time is a good time, although I might be just kind of feeling a little crazy at this time, but time is a wonderful thing. So make better use of yourself before you expire. And one of the worst things to do with time is comparing yourself to others. Hmm. Yep, because think about this. If I went and bought a nice house or a nice car, and then you're trying to put pressure on it because you, guess what? You're trying to compare and say why he has it. So now you are pushing yourself to get it. Don't get it because I have it. Get it because it's what, it's what you want. So do not put pressure on yourself trying to compete with me. Because you don't know what I did to get it. And as we look at this, it says comparing. And when we say in comparing, I know Dr. Gregor just mentioned the word competing, competing and comparing. But sometimes comparing is like um, you're trying to be like somebody or you want want to uh, act like they act or, uh, oh, look how easy they got it. You don't never know. We don't know. Don't compare yourself. You, you, I want to, I got to run fast like that person run. No, don't even compare yourself. Why am I not? Oh, uh, walking fast like that person walking fast, and all of a sudden, guess what? You start feeling really bad when you start that because you 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 got your mind not on yourself, and at the moment you got your mind looking somewhere else where you should not be doing that. And I believe people, as we see others, sure, I believe people should inspire us to do better, and uh, but it shouldn't be so. We should not be so consumed with what other people's doing that we lose sight and we lose focus on where we are at the moment. 
again, this is an open forum. So if you want, if you want to say something, please feel free also. But it says again, uh, the worst thing to do with time is comparing yourself to others. Because guess what? We always, all of us will have our time, our celebration time in the earth. You know what? You may be celebrating the day and maybe I don't have it to celebrate. But guess what? As I continue on, time will bring me to my celebration. But if I start uh, feeling bad because I can't celebrate when you celebrate, I'm wasting myself. A cow eats grass and gets fat, but if a dog eats grass, it will die. Hmm. Never <laughs> compare yourself with others. Run your own race. And and actually, all of this is biblical. It even tells us in the Bible that we should never compare ourselves with others. And that's in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, in the 12th verse. He says here, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. It's just not wise to do that. My father always told me, he said, Gregory, never want for what your friends have because you don't know what it did to get it to impress you. And I've always lived by that advice. I'm not envious. I'm not jealous. And I'm not trying to compare myself with anybody because I admire you, and that's it. But I'm, I don't want to be like you because guess what? I don't want to uh, put it like this. If you have a nice car, I don't want your car notes. So I compare myself with you to, to where to go and buy this, the kind of car that you drive or buy a, a more expensive car. No, you pay your note, and, and, and I'm glad for you, but I'm not comparing myself with you. And I love what he says, run your race. And, and and even in, in church, in religious settings, and, and I have basically been in church most of my entire life uh, from a, a, a 12 years old, old teenager on up. And it was all about who could do something better. Even the, the church, it's all about who know Jesus the better, best, who got more <laughs> Jesus, who can do this the best. Who can do that the best? And uh, to the point that it became a place of com uh, 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 a strong competitive place. And it was always somebody was out doing somebody. And, um, you know, not even knowing that, you know, we were putting pressure on ourselves, wasting ourselves away. And even when it comes to us in the Lord, run your race. That may be. Don't worry about trying to be like me or trying to be like uh, Betty or trying to be like Miss Lois. Run your race. And that's what God was trying to help me when I was making the transition. I was trying to bring everybody along. Come on, come on, come on. And I'm just, just wasting myself trying to bring them. And the Lord said, no, Deborah, lead them. Keep moving. Pray for them, and they will catch up. And trust me, I did that. And when I did that, I began to notice later on people was catching it because we all don't get it all at the same time. And it's okay. It's okay. So let us run our race. What works for one person may be that which will kill you. And that is mm. so true. And, and even God, when the Lord told me this some five years ago, or maybe more, he said, Deborah, the Bible is not a one size fit all. I had never thought about that. And what he was trying to tell me 
everything, everybody don't get it the same way. And stop trying to make it look like everybody got to get it this way. Everybody got to do the same thing. No. What works for one person uh, may hurt me. I remember a parable in the Bible where the disciples, uh, the wheat had, I mean, the tear had grown up in the wheat. And the disciples said, Master, do you want us to go out and get the uh, tares out of the wheat? He said, no, just leave it alone. Let it grow together. And when I come, I'll separate it. And what he was trying to say, you know what, don't do it because you could damage it. You could damage the wheat trying to get the tear out. But I'm God, I'm skillful, just let it grow together. It's going to be all right. I'll separate it. Mm -hmm. Focus on the gifts and the talents God gave you. And don't be envious of the blessings he gave others. It's just beautiful. But, you know, when we operate in the kingdom and have that kingdom mindset, we learn to celebrate each other's gifts. But, you know, when you have, like, sometimes you have a church mentality, most of the time everybody, the, the, the singers, they're kind of at each other, who going to sing and who can sing the best. And it just creates so much friction when we understand that God gave us the gift, you operate in your gift, I'm going to celebrate you. You, I operate in my gift, you celebrate me. And guess what? We can get along. We all don't have to do the same thing. Whatever you're good at, I'll let you do that. And I'm okay with you doing it. So he says, uh, don't be envious of the blessings he gave others because it's all came from God. It's all, all of the blessings. God gave them to all of us. He's our daddy. And it tells us here, both the lion and the shark are professional hunters, but a lion cannot hunt in the ocean, and a shark cannot hunt in the jungle. You see, they're both, they're both hunters, but the shark have to hunt in the ocean, and the lion, he hunts in the uh, jungle. But they're both hunters. So what we're saying, we may be both doing this, uh, got the same gift, but God may got me doing it over here like this and may have you over here doing it like that. And I can't say, well, yours is wrong and mine is right. <laughs> and you, yours is wrong and mine is right. It's kind of like religion, you know, the, the, the different denomination. You know what? Everybody say theirs is right and theirs is wrong. It's like, why can't we just enjoy the Lord? And also the shark. And the lion, they know their territory. Even though they are both hunters, guess what? The lion knows very knows what that he cannot go into the ocean and do anything there. He would die. And the shark knows that if he cannot come on land to do anything, he would die. So they know the territory. So we got to know our lanes also as human beings. Know your territories. Know your gift. Embrace your gift, and, and work on your gift. And also respect. The shark, he ain't trying to get, get over there in the lions out in the jungle. It's, it's not only, uh, it's also a, a, a mutual respect. Because guess what? I'm sure the lion respects the shark because I can't get in the water. <laughs> I can't swim. <laughs> exactly. The, the, the lion can't swim. Yeah. And, and, the, and the shark cannot walk on land. So guess what? I stay in my territory where, where I'm very comfortable. And lions, I'm staying where I'm comfortable. But guess yeah. what? They are both hunters. That's right. And it's the beauty how God designed all of us different, but yet we're all really just here in this space of time to make a difference. So while we're here in this space of time, let's not be mad. Spend this time being angry. Spend this time frustrated. 
spend this Fourteen. time fighting, fussing and fighting, and just going on. My goodness, this this little space that we have in this midst of this time. We're in a space, and God has put us in the midst of time. And I'm telling you, we don't know, never know when the time, when we run to the end of our destiny in time. So since we don't know it, we got to do what the scriptures say. Teach us, Lord, to number our days that we may apply wisdom. Hmm. You know, somebody say, I might, was born kind of, out of it, but I ain't dying like that. I don't want to. I don't want to die like I was born. Some people is born poor. I don't want to die like that. God has given me enough time to get things in order and and make a difference. And all of us, one way or another, you done made a great difference in the space of time. So we would just want you to capture that moment. Start working from that time. Don't think about those bad mistakes. You know what? Thank God I just caught it. You know what? I caught it. That's behind me now. I'm going to focus on the good things that I'm, I can do, the things that I have done. I'm going to focus on that, and I'm just going to continue to just enhance that while I'm in this space of time. Because if you don't watch it, when you start thinking, you know, for some reason we have that thing. We think about all the bad stuff that happened to us in this space of time. But one songwriter said, all of my good days outweigh my bad days, and I won't complain. All right. Sounds good. (laughs) Okay. It's saying that that the lion cannot hunt in the ocean doesn't, um, I'm sorry, that a lion cannot hunt in the ocean doesn't make him unless are uh, uh, useless, and the sh- and that the shark cannot hunt in the jungle doesn't also make him useless. Both have their own territory where they can do well. If a rose smell better than a tomato, it doesn't mean the rose can make a better stew. Don't try to compare yourself with others. You also have your own strength. Look for it and build on it. Look for it and build on it. Some of us, we just got a way of encouraging people. And I used to say this in church because when I was really doing the more organized church, and you know, you have the people and some, they think they really got it better than the others. And God just started telling me to start preaching and start ministering this. And I would just tell the people, you know what, I don't care what your job is. You could just be, uh, your job could be just bringing the pastor a cold bottle of water in the church. You know, because sometimes people think because a person is the urge or whatever, their job is less important. I said, but you know what? And I may be running all over the world, just ministering to all the people all over the world, going, going, going. I said, but when we all get to heaven, guess what? We're going to get the same reward. We're going to get the same reward because it doesn't matter how much stuff I do here in the earth that's going to make me, yeah, he's going to put me in a better heaven. No, we all when we all get with him, Guess what? We're going to get the same reward. So we got to relax. Don't beat yourself up. Enjoy this space of time. Go ahead and set in your mind, I'm going to enjoy my space of time. This time that I got, and you know it's kind of like you can use a, 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 a imagination. I'm, I got this little bit of time right here. <clears throat> I'm going to just sit in here, and I'm going to just enjoy it. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to skip, I'm going to run, I'm going to go walk, I'm going to enjoy my time. The fact it, that you do not know, the fact that you do not know when your time on earth will be over, you can you can make a conscious decision. I said from now on, I will try to make the, make, do the, to make the best of what I have. And whatsoever it is, just enjoy yourself. It may be you want to stay home one day and just relax. 
that's fine. It, it mean, exactly. that's fine. If that's if that's what you want to do, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But don't try to wait for oh, when I get this thing here, I will then I will do that. So I, I'm waiting for this thing to happen before I do that. In the meantime, your life is not waiting. As you wait, your your, your time on earth is not waiting for you. It's not standing still for things to happen. And and even in the midst of our time, there'll be some things that at that time that comes up, you just can't do it, do although it. you exactly. would love to. You may want to and you would love to, but know your limits. I, I, I would love to do it, but right now, the time right now that I'm in, where I'm at right now in the space of time, I just can't go. It's okay to say you can't go. Oh, you and, can't and, do it. And don't be apologetic at all. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't 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 beat yourself up about don't, it. Don't don't beat yourself up about like, it. Oh. And guess what? Good people that's in your arena, you know what they're gonna say? They're gonna say, "Okay, I understand." And I know that the citizen when I was twenty, I could do. I, I mean, now I can't do it. So guess what? I'm not gonna worry about it. It, 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 that's also in the Bible. When I was a child, I acted like a child. Am I right? Now I'm a grown up. Guess what? So you 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 get to realize that you know as I, as I age of of, of of become better like wine. I said I know I can't do it again. And guess what? I'm fine with it. Okay, you also have your own strength. Look for it and build on it. All animals that exist were in Noah's Ark. A snail is one of those animals. If God could wait long enough for a snail to enter <laughs> Noah's Ark. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> and it just lets us know God concerned about everything. Some some mornings I sit out in my patio and I look at little ants crawling. I look at little spiders crawling. I look at little bitty little, and I'm like, you know what? God is just as concerned about that little thing there. He running around. He done got him some food. I say, look at God. God is concerned about all of that. I said, it's just amazing. But he said if God could just wait, he, he, God had to wait on the snail to get on the ark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. His door of grace won't close till you reach your expected position in life. Excellent. Mm-hmm. So it's not about you getting it when you get to heaven. He wants you to have it while you're in the life, in this t- space of time. He wants you to be at peace. He wants you to enjoy the things that you enjoy. You know, do something that you ain't never done. Go somewhere that you've never been. And stop believing that you can't go because of. No, go where you've never been. Every year, my my thing is every year I want to go somewhere that I've never been. Eat at, eat, at, eat at a restaurant that you that you always wanted to go to eat at. You know, indulge yourself. Yes, and sometime if you've been wondering how maybe a lobster tastes, you know, everyone, you know what I'm gonna go see how I like it. You never know. You know, even if you don't like it, it doesn't matter. You know, at least I tried it. <laughs> there are many times Mother Lewis has gone to the restaurant and get when she gets through, her food is already paid for. So you'll never know by going there who will pay for your food. You don't know that. <laughs> so you got to just be bold and take the initiative. Mm-hmm. It reminds me when Jesus was in the earth with the disciples. He said to the disciples, y'all come and go with me. But when Jesus left the earth and went back to his father, 
you'll find the scripture, he says, now, wherever you go, I will go with you. Mm -hmm. So wherever you go, he want to go with you. You gotta, you can't just stay at home all the time. But now, you know, if that pleases you, but I, I mean, just get out, check out things. You mm -hmm. never know what you may find. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says, never look down on yourself. Ooh, Keep wow. looking up. Never look down on yourself. And I have made some uh, mistakes, and uh, I used to kind of, you know, beat myself up and say, man, how could I do that to myself? But I don't do that no more. I just say, well, sorry, and I just keep going. <laughs> I can't help it. Well, sorry about that. Got to keep going. Got to keep going. I don't want to linger there. Got to keep going because guess what? I cannot linger in mistakes because I'm human. And God told me that the other day. He said, I just wanted to keep keep you and remember you're still human, and it's okay. You're still human, but you, but you got to keep moving. That's the word the Lord is always saying to me, keep moving. Uh, yes, the key is to not beat yourself. Don't say, I'm not good enough. This person is better than me. No, no, do not devalue yourself. Don't put yourself down. I mean, why are you? Why are you? Why are you? You can put somebody up and put yourself down. No, if you can, if you can put somebody up, learn to put yourself up also. And and that's not being mm -hmm. conceited. That's not being boastful. That's that's you know what I admire me, I love me, and and guess what? And I'm esteeming myself. That's why you call self-esteem. Okay, I'm gonna read the last part. It says, remember that broken crayons still color. All right, now. <laughs> Keep on pushing, and you, are never, you never can tell how close you are to your goals. So in that, in the closing, just keep going. You may make a mistake. It's okay. I'm human. And I'm still here, and I'm still learning. And even in our mistakes, God is trying to teach us something. Always remember that. Most time when you er make an error, it's always for it's a teaching moment. Mm -hmm. And learn to learn something from it, because if you didn't make that error, you may not have never learned what God was trying to teach you. Just learn from it and keep moving. And, and this is, and it sinks in. Whatever you're saying tonight, it it just goes into your being. Uh, you might not remember everything, but it just goes into you, into yourself. Yes. And why that is happening, uh, Betty, is because truth is already in our bellies. It's down mm -hmm. inside of us, and it's awakening. And when it hear it, it's kind of like when that when it hear its name being called. It <laughs> rise up. <laughs> yeah, like, that's right. boy, that feel good. <laughs> it <Yeah>. feels good. <laughs> it does. Yes, and that's what we talk about. King, that's the truth. The kingdom is true. It's just true. When you hear it, even though you never heard it before, but when you hear it, it just does something to you. I mean, I've been in the place and I've heard things. I'm like, I had never heard that before. I didn't even know it. But guess what? It resonated with my spirit. It caused something to light up inside of me. And it stood up. And I'm like, whoa. And it's kind of like seeds, you know, because the Bible speaks of the word of the Lord is like a seed. And when it's planted, it'll, it'll come up. And it rises up inside of us. And just in the closing tonight, let us not take, uh, let us don't 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 focus on time. I'm seeing that we don't focus on time. We got to focus on ourselves in the midst of the time that we're in. If that makes sense, I'm I'm going to be more cautious, cautious of what I'm doing of myself versus standing around watching the clock all the time. 
I'm going to focus on Deborah, realizing that, guess what? I got to do more with Deborah in this little space of time that I have. And doing more with Deborah for Deborah doesn't mean I got to be moving all the time. It's about changing the way I see things, changing the way I think about things, changing how I interact with people. Because sometimes people, you got to change the way you interact with them. The Lord told me one time, he said, Deborah, stop allowing people to come in and out of your life whenever they get ready. Hmm. You know, okay. you, you, they, people in your life and all of a sudden, they just kind of disappear. They just walk out. You know, what happened? And, and you're you trying to call them, and, and all of a sudden, they just gone. And then six months later, they just pop right back up and want to get started right where they left off. No. We can't do that no more. I ain't doing that no more. Let's talk about what happened. Because I, I was a friend. And you just walk out, you left me hanging. Something is wrong with that. And 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 sometimes people that will do that, they have their own personal issues, but it's up to me to explain it to them in a nice way to help them to realize re- good relationship is not like that. Even if you need some time, just tell me. Uh, Deborah, I need a little time so we won't be talking for a minute. And you know what I'll say? I said, okay, then. I'll be right here when you get finished, when you're done. I'll be here. And, you know, I'm noticing I, I won't put up with crumbs from people anymore either. I'm not going to be a leftover. I'm really, I've been a leftover and take, accepting crumbs my whole life, and I, I just don't do that anymore. And it's and good. It's good for you. It's good for you because what you're doing now, you're valuing your own self. Because you yeah. don't deserve that. Right. You don't deserve that. Because you got you're a good person. You don't deserve that. And I never did, but I allowed it. And now, now I'm, I'm wiser, and I've had one too many crumbs, so I don't want crumbs anymore. All right. Man. That's the, that, that, that sticking charge. That's sticking. That's sticking charge of your own life now. You are taking charge. And said, as you go through life, there are folks you will have to leave behind because you have all outgrown them. They are not on your level, and they still they are still good people. But don't get me wrong. But you outgrown them, and you have to leave them behind. Well, even new people in my life, I, I it's like I, I can tell. I, I, you can just see if it's balanced. If if the if a new person, if if the relationship is balanced. Then they can stay, but if it's lopsided, no, they can't there you stay. Go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Can I say something? Yes, go right ahead. I uh, I was wanting to come in on Miss Betty. Miss Betty, God taught me not to be around people that hurt me because I have been hurt so many times in my life. And, you know, people adding hurt on on to hurt, and he was delivering me. Now God has got me to the point to where I'm not going to be around nobody that's going to mistreat me. I don't care who you are. You can be my mother, my father, my sister, my brother. I don't care. I'm in the stage of life that God is teaching me how to appreciate the time that I do have life here on earth, I experienced uh, death days before my birthday. And I, I looking at life now that it's more precious to me, and I just want to be happy. And I'm not going to let nobody mistreat me in no kind of form or fashion. And I just, I don't care who you are. But but it's not only about mistreating, it's about being nurtured, too. So if you're in a relationship, even if you're nurturing your friend or whatever, then you need nurturing back. It's got to be balanced. Yeah, because you see, it takes two to to be in love. And sometimes 
you got to realize that, okay, this person is a good person, but because you see, in, in, in relationship, either the person add to your life or they take away from your life. Yes. And, and there has to be a balance, an exchange. And and, yes. and, 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 and I'm not talking about money. Even, even, no, even it's it's que- it could be questions or just yeah, yeah, how was your day? Yes. It, 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 it just it, a mutual respect. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, and and you kind of value yourself enough to know that okay, this person is good, but the person is not on my level. It's not good for me, so I will let it go. I mean, and there's no there's no harm in that. That's right. No, it's healthy. It's healthy. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. It is very healthy. Yeah, and these are the things that God is teaching us how to live in the earth, and it's 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 a beautiful thing. And when we begin to live that way, and um, trust me, it will come the day the people that have hurt us and, and, and we have taken a stand to not to allow them to do that anymore, they're going to come to us and they will apologize. And, yes, it, and, yes. and not that you're looking for it, but it's, it, it will happen. It's just like that. Because when they realize that they don't have nobody else to hurt because now they realize they were hurting you because they were hurting. And when they are healed, then they will come and apologize. All right. All right. Amen. Well, okay. that, is, that is it, Dr. Gregor. We're done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Again, uh, before we get off the line, if anybody has something to say or wants a, a little bit more clarity or understanding, please feel free. Or maybe just to add to what we just said. We don't mind. Please speak out this time. Okay, she, uh, Sheila, pray for, us, pray for us, please. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lesson tonight. We thank you, God, for teaching us how to live life and enjoy heaven here on earth, Lord God. We thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding and the counsel, Lord. Lord God, and we thank you for Dr. Gregory and Dr. Pat, uh, and Pastor Deborah. Lord God, we ask that you continue to use them for your glory to teach us and to teach your people how to walk and transform and transition into the kingdom, Lord God, and how to rejuvenate on this earth, Lord God, how to live and enjoy life. And I just want to thank you, Lord God. I thank you for the kingdom, and I thank you for the revelation and and your word, your true word that has been spoken on this line tonight. And, Lord God, I ask that you continue to teach us your way, Lord God, not man way, but your way, and that you will always be in the midst of us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And I have one more thing to say. Um, Pastor Deborah has a YouTube channel now, and it's She's got some great videos on there. Oh, I watched it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, De- thank you, Betty. And thank you can you, um, you can pull them up by going on, putting Pastor Deborah Squire YouTube or YouTube Pastor Deborah Squire. Either way, I think you can probably p- pull them. It's YouTube Pastor Deborah Squire. And, and Dr. Gregory has one on there about letting, reading, letting go, which is really nice too. So y'all check it out. 